the hammiest of actors would eat this scenery. Uh, open up, open up right now. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst movie sets. For this list, we're taking a look at the laziest, cheesiest, and most unattractive handmade sets in motion pictures. These are those sets that take you completely out of the movie watching experience and make you wonder if the filmmaker's kids built them. <laughs> Number 10. The whole movie, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. This is not good. Although Mortal Kombat Annihilation had almost double the budget of its 1995 predecessor, somehow everything got a major downgrade, including the sets. If this were a student film or a theme park stunt show, the various temples here would look pretty impressive. Is it like this everywhere? As a multi-million dollar motion picture though, this is one but ugly experience with bleak colors and dilapidated, unimaginative set pieces. I don't have time for these stupid games! You know you're in trouble when the video game's 16-bit backgrounds look more glorious than the movie's art direction. It's a fatality on the eyes. <laughs> but fortunately, well, for audiences at least, these sets were destroyed during Hurricane Katrina, so we won't have to put up with them ever again. Number 9. The Not Mushroom Kingdom, Super Mario Brothers. Name! Mario. Last name. Mario. Yet another video game movie that failed to live up to expectations. Super Mario Brothers will have you contemplating if the filmmakers ever even picked up a Nintendo controller. Goomba! When you think of Mario's world, what comes to mind? Green hills, welcoming clouds, and mushrooms the size of skyscrapers. You can go ahead and choke this little mushroom kingdom all you want, cause I'm out of here. That is the complete opposite of this film's dark, dank, dystopian parallel dimension. This city looks like table scraps of Blade Runner. With no blocks, green pipes, or castles anywhere in sight. Almost like it was built in an old cement factory. Inaccuracy to the game aside, the sets are still explosively overblown. I'd call them the Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. Number 8. The Goblin King's Throne Room, Labyrinth. What's said is said. Jim Henson was truly one of the most influential visionaries who ever lived. Much of his creative genius shines through in Labyrinth, although this particular set piece looks pretty lame and dated. Go back to your room. Play with your toys and your costumes. Forget about the baby. But then the same could be said about David Bowie's random, totally unnecessary musical number, Magic Dance. While the song is admittedly kind of fun in its absurdity, Bowie's bombastic, flamboyant musical stylings don't really match the cramped, dreary environment. His throne room isn't especially fun, whimsical, or magical, diminishing our desire to get up and dance. Dance, magic, dance. Dance, magic, dance. Jump, magic, jump. Number 7. Planet Phytos, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. What power? It is on the distant planet of Phytos. It's very dangerous. While the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TV series was never known for groundbreaking visuals or exotic locations, the Rangers' first theatrical outing does arguably up the ante, but barely. Leave Phaedos before it's too late. Despite the theatrical treatment, the film falls short of its ambitions to appear epic. Case in point, Planet Phaedos. <laughs> With obviously fake mountains, obviously fake backdrops, and just an obviously fake atmosphere all around, this set wouldn't even cut it for old school Star Trek. Get your hands off of him, Spock. Or an episode of Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> Devoid of anything resembling creativity, inventiveness, or originality, the art direction is a failure on all fronts. Hi. Number six, Alaskan neighborhood. North. Welcome to Juneau, Alaska. Please remain seated until the plane comes to a complete stop in Anchorage, Alaska. We apologize on Rob Reiner's behalf to any Alaskans that sat through this movie. On a quest to find nicer parents, 
Young North travels north to an Inuit village. Who's that? North? This is your new grandfather. Hello, North. What he discovers there is so stereotypical, inaccurate, and offensive that the audience might think they're watching a racist cartoon. You know, like those offensive pieces of animated propaganda from the war? The landscape sure is beautiful up here. Snow White picket fences, igloos with garage doors, and ice flow lines? Next! Come on, let's go! Are you kidding us? It'd be one thing if these visual gags were clever and funny or, you know, actually worked, but they're about as uncomfortable to look at as the rest of North. If your mother says don't make a face because it could freeze in that position, you better take her seriously. Number five, Mexico Sunset, Three Amigos. We are the three amigos. Yet another movie that didn't exactly strive for authenticity. Three Amigos shot exactly none of its scenes in Mexico. <laughs> what am I doing in Mexico? <laughs> Unlike North, however, this film's unrealistic sets do amount to some good humor. <laughs> Him. There's an especially fun salute to Technicolor backdrops from classic westerns as our bumbling heroes sing around a campfire while the sun goes down. From the desert sky above. That being said, the scenery is about as believable as what you'd see on a Saturday Night Live sketch or at a museum exhibit. All of your work is done. It's still technically cheesy, but at least it's lovingly cheesy. Number four, the rooftop, the room. Hey, Denny. Named, we assume, for the film's main set, much of the room is staged like a play. But we're not sure which elementary school is responsible for this production. Let's take him to the police. Oh, f***ing dead! The film was primarily shot on a soundstage, with the most blatantly clear instance being the rooftop scenes where San Francisco is green-screened, poorly, into the background. You don't know shit. Wait who do you think you are? Despite the fact that director Tommy Wiseau had access to an actual San Francisco rooftop. Gotta tell you about something. Shoot, Danny. But instead of using it, Wiseau spared no expense, setting up fake-ass bricks, a patio set, and a shed thing? Come on, let's go. <laughs> to completely replicate the San Fran experience. Anyway, how's your sex life? Anyway, how is your sex life? Number three, Skeletor's throne room, Masters of the Universe. Secure the room! Hurry! With so many other nostalgic 80s cartoons getting the live-action cinematic treatment as of late. He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe! He-Man and the Masters of the Universe could use a reboot. We'll drop right into the throne room, fight off two or three thousand of Skeletor's crack troops, break into the force field and free the sorceress. Right. It couldn't possibly look any worse than this 1987 feature. I am Skeletor! Where Skeletor's throne room in the cartoon series was sufficiently nightmarishly badass. This one seems confused. Skeletor, the master of the universe. Does it want to be mystical, high-tech, hellish, or just silly? In any case, the overlord of evil should really fire his interior decorator. You've not won yet, Skeletor. It might have been the largest set in decades, but Skeletor deserves better than this. And so does Frank Langella. And so do we. It's over. Yes. For you. Number two, the mountaintop, the Princess Bride. Promise I will not kill you until you reach the top. There's no doubt about it, The Princess Bride is a perennial classic that's perfect in every way. You could read a little bit more if you want. That being said, part of the film's charm does derive from the fact that it's so corny. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Much of that corniness leaks out from the film's sets, which occasionally look about as real as something out of a fairy tale, the most evident example being the summit of the Cliffs of Insanity. The Cliffs of Insanity! While the scene will have you smiling all the way through, there is no denying that the set, backdrop, and props are inconceivably fake. Inconceivable! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. We'd better clean you up before the flies get to you. Captain Zinni, why can't we ever use that garbage pill? 
Grave robbers will be shot. Good thing we're not grave robbers. Welcome to Spooky Island, the frightfully popular spring break spot for college students. Number one, the graveyard, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Those incidents in the graveyard these past few days just got me worried. Plan 9 from Outer Space has been hailed as the worst movie ever made. And you can understand why based on this horrendously campy graveyard. But from the blast arose the moving figure of the dead old man. This set is obviously phony. Like, did Ed Wood seriously think the audience wouldn't notice that cardboard headstone tipping over? Filmmaking may be about the big picture, but absolutely nothing in this particular picture is even remotely convincing. Stupid! Stupid! That's all I'm taking from you. Get back here, you jerk! Oh. Let him finish. The set is so shamelessly low rent, half assed, and passionately sucky, however, that it isn't surprising Plan 9 is also often considered the best worst movie ever made. <laughs> agree with our list? No! What do you think is the worst movie set ever constructed? Like, oh no. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.